This tutorial explains how to calculate the standard deviation using the SD function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In the first example of this tutorial, I will calculate the standard deviation of a vector object. And for this, we first need to create an example data object, as you can see in line two of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object is appearing, which is called X. And this data object contains six numeric values ranging from one to nine. So if we want to calculate the standard deviation of this data object, then we need to apply the SD function, as you can see in line four of the code. And we can apply this function to the name of the data object in which our data is stored. So in this case, to the data object X, so if you run line four of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the standard deviation of our vector object X is 2.93. So in this first example, I have shown you the basic application of the SD function to a vector object. However, sometimes you might have NA values in your data in case some of the observations are missing. And this is what I want to show you in the next example. So let's assume that we are dealing with a vector object that contains some numeric values and an A values. Then we first have to create such a vector object in R, as you can see in line six of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the top right of R Studio that we have created another vector object, which is called XNA. And this vector object contains the same values as our previously used data object X, and it also contains an NA value. So if we now apply the SD function to this vector object, you can see at the bottom that the value NA is returned. And the reason for that is that one of the values in our data object XNA is NA. However, the SD function provides the NA.remove argument, as you can see in line 10 of the code. And if we specify this argument to be equal to true, then the NA values are automatically removed from the calculation of the standard deviation. So if you run line 10 of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that again, the standard deviation of our data is returned and the NA value has been removed. So in the previous two examples, I have explained how to calculate the standard deviation of a vector. However, it's also possible to calculate the standard deviation of a data frame column. And this is what I want to show you in the next example. So first we need to load some example data and we can do that as you can see in line 12 of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object is appearing at the top right. And this data object is called Iris. And we can have a look at the first six rows of this data object by applying the head function to this data object, as you can see in line 13 of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our data frame contains five columns and different values in the different columns. And now let's assume that we want to calculate the standard deviation of the column sepal length. Then we can apply the SD function to our data frame and we can extract the simple length column using the dollar operator. So between the name of the data frame and the name of the column, we need to specify the dollar operator. So if you run line 15 of the code, you can see at the bottom that another output is returned and this value is the standard deviation of the column simple length in the data frame iris. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.